Today's question is how far can you go in astrophotography with a little mount like the Skywatcher AZ GTI? This mount comes for lunar and planetary work. It is an Altas mount, it's not an equatorial mount and it doesn't have any of the required accessories to work with the deep sky, doesn't have a latitude base, doesn't have a counterweight, doesn't have a polar scope. But there is a firmware upgrade from Skywatcher that unlocks equatorial mode for your AZ GTI. So I took this mount because I wanted something more flexible than the Star Adventurer Pro. The Star Adventurer Pro is a lovable tracker, I love it, I had two of them, I still have one, but the problem is that uh, even if you want to photograph the moon, you have at least to do a course polar alignment. With the pandemic and the Covid, I was forced to image from home and to be able to see Polaris and to align to Polaris in order to photograph the moon was really time consuming and I prefer the point and track feature that the AZ GTI has. So all in all, I decided to focus on the AZ GTI and build the ultimate setup around it. So let's see what I've got. Welcome down to the rabbit hole. This is all my gear for astrophotography and everything is built around the AZ GTI. The setup is quite flexible. I can pop the, the mount on a little photographic tripod or I can use this heavy duty Skywatcher stainless steel uh, tripod. This tripod is six kilograms in weight. It can support 30 kilos of payload and uh, is very sturdy. So, Let's go a bit deeper into what you need in order to use the AZ GTI for astrophotography. So in order to show you how I can do astrophotography with the AZ GTI, I thought it would be nice to build together the setup so you can see which type of accessories I use and why. So the first thing is of course the tripod and this is the Skywatcher stainless steel tripod with its own pierre. I use this because I want the maximum stability and the pierre raise the, uh, the gear so that uh, there is no problem uh, with having the camera or the telescope bumping at any time into the tripod legs. On top of the pierre I have a leveling base. Now keeping the mount level when you are working in Altas mode is very important and uh, this tripod is not easy to use to level because you don't have bubble level and you have the extension screw for the extending the, length, the legs down there and eventually you have your bubble level on the top of the ESA GTI that is sitting up here so you have to go down blindly extend the legs come up here look at the bubble level and this is a lengthy process so a uh, leveling base like this Leo photo is very nice and it doesn't really create prob problems of stability so if you have this type of, uh, of uh, tripod use get one of these leveling bays. On top of it, we put the latitude base. This is allow us to polar align the mount and I use the uh, William Optics and this is one of the best wedges you can buy for uh, Star Trackers and the AZ GTI. So has a, it works on different principles with respect to those you find for the Ioptron or for, or for the Star Adventurer Pro is a push-pull mechanism down here so it's very precise in the way it allows you to uh, polar align your mount so finally we can put the AZ GTI on the latitude base now to do that you need to have you need to buy a Vixen 
or dovetail plate like this one. Now the problem is that, particularly with the latitude base for the Star Adventurer, this locking knob is quite large and uh, if you take a normal dovetail base, this the, during the rotation the mount will bump against this knob and so you need to have something higher and I found this Artesky uh, Vixen base for the Aza GTI uh, that is worked perfectly. It we can pop our Aza GTI on the latitude base, we lock everything and now we have the mount sitting on the wedge, everything is leveled, everything is nice. Now because we are working in equatorial mode we need to have a counterweight. The AZ GTI has no counterweight and here is the traded socket for the bar of a counterweight. To do that I went to Home Depot and I took a 1 meter long threaded bar, this is M12, standard M12 uh, um, thread and uh, I cut it about 30 cm in length because I didn't want to have a very long um, a very long shaft that can create problems, uh, flex store, flex store and things like so. And then I got, because I use it also for a Celestron C5, I got a 2 kg counterweight, so I slide it in and then I can I can screw my my shaft into this AZ GTI and uh, let's go with my Skywatcher EvoGuide 50ED. This is my go-to refractor for imaging uh, deep sky objects. I, I use an AZ 180T MC camera which is not cooled. I have the Skywatcher field flattener. Uh, this field flattener cannot work with uh, uh, DSLR and mirrorless camera that's because the back focus is too small. So um, if you want to use your DSLR or mirrorless camera, you may look at the field flattener from Starizona, the EVO FF. Uh, they claim that the new version that will come out in July, mid-July 2021, will be able to uh, focus, to, will let a DSLR reach focus with the EVO guide. So you may want to look at in that. Now the EVO guide is mounted on a 3D printed bracket from Astro Kraken. So we slide in directly the imaging setup, we lock it in place. This is the zero position for the mount. The counterweight is down and the mount is pointing north. So if you want to know, uh, to be clear, to, to align the, the, the AZ GTI to the um, celestial pole, the bubble level on the top of the AZ GTI is now pointing to your celestial pole, either Polaris or the southern celestial pole. And having the scope pointing there with the counterweight down, that's the zero position for your mount. Now we need to control, well, to power the mount. We can do that with an external power pack or we can use batteries. I prefer to use batteries and use the power tank for something else. And here I have 8 AA Panasonic NLO Pro batteries. They work like a charm. I have them since years now and I can still pull out two to three nights of imaging. So that, 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 that's great. Now, uh, how do we control the uh, AZ GTI? You can do that with the SceneScan application, uh, but then you have not a lot of options. And what I prefer to do is to use the Z ZW AZ Air. So this is a Raspberry Pi computer and it's very light, very portable and uh, is dedicated to astrophotography. So this is the first version, it's not the pro one, it's not the current version. And um, so I want to use this to control my AZ GTI and the cameras and uh, do the polar alignment, do the plate solving, oh, the focusing, everything I need to do uh, for astrophotography I want to do with this guy. So the point, first point is where to put it. Um, there is not much place around. What I found is that uh, if you take a um, wall mount from Quadlock that produce a case for your phone, they have a particular locking system, so they sell also this wall mount that you can stick on the wall and I stick it on the opposite side 
of the battery compartment on the uh, AZ GTI. Then I took the generic adapter that you can stick under any kind of device. And now I can simply lock in place my AZ Air on the, on the mount. And this way, if the mount is rotating, the AZ Air is rotating with it. And so there is no strain on most of the cables that uh, I will need to put. Now, I want to guide my system and so I have uh, the ZWO30F4 mini guide scope with the AZ, AZ 224NC, my planetary camera. And so I simply put it on this 3D printed bracket that they have the place for a guiding scope or a red dot star finder, whatever you need to use. With the SEA, one problem is that the Wi-Fi is a bit sketchy. There is a Wi-Fi extender that you can plug in into the Ethernet port of the SEA and have it hang it somewhere or you can stick it with Velcro in other position. And uh, I like not to use the SEA to power my extender. I prefer to have all my ports available. And so I use uh, an extension cord for the 12 volt input and I will then power it with my power tank. So this is one thing. Now how we control the, uh, the mount with the AZ Air. We know that we can connect my, the phone to the AZ Air and then we need to, to tell the AZ Air how to connect to the mount in order to control the mount for guiding, for go to and things like so. You could do that in Wi-Fi but uh, the mount it's only work with uh, 2.4 gigahertz and that is quite slow and make all the loading of image of images the focusing procedure a bit slow and uh, frustrating there is a better way to do that and uh, we can use something that is in here this is my bundle of cables i try to keep them neat and i can and usually hang them on the uh, wedge so let's start connecting things up Now I have my camera connected and I still have one cable here, you can see there. So this is an eco mode cable and this allows you to create a wide connection between the AZ Air and the, um, and the AZ GTI. So if you take this eco mode cable, be sure that you take the one with RJ12 connector, not the RJ45. So with the RJ12 connector, you stick it into the hand control port like so, and then you connect this, the other end to the AZ Air. Now you have a wired connection between the AZ Air and the AZ GTI. This is pretty much everything. Uh, we need now to power everything up. For that, I use this Bressel power tank is quite compact, lightweight, has enough power for more than one night of imaging and you have 12 volts port, you have USB, USB quick charger and you have the USB-C as well as a standard outlet and you have red light also. And uh, the only cable I will have now running down the setup is the, ex the power cord for the extender and the power cord for the uh, AZ Air. And so th this completes basically the setup that I use for deep sky astrophotography. Now there are two, you may have two objections to my way of work. The first one is how much does it cost this compared to a real uh, grown up um, equatorial mount for astrophotography and uh, why do you want to build such not portable setup around a lightweight mount so as far as the budget concerned this setup costs about two thousand seven hundred dollars which is quite a lot compared to the cost of the mount alone which is about four hundred dollars the point is that most of these setups come from the imaging equipment, guiding equipment, the uh, control equipment, power tank, filters, everything that you, the, all, of, all of this you still have to buy if you buy a full grown, um, full grown mount. About portability, I don't think the AZ GTI is done for extreme portability. So the real advantage I see in this type of setup is that 
is the dual use you can get out of the AZ GTI. So you can use it as is intended, as was intended to be used in Altas mode for photographing the moon, the sun, the planet, and it works very well. And you can also use it if you need it in equatorial mode for and having a relatively small and for astrophotography standard a budget setup uh, for fully computerized astrophotography and this is what I think is the advantage of using the AZ GTI over the uh, Star Adventurer for example and uh, sometimes even over a full grown mount so this is how I do astrophotography with my AZ GTI I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you for the next one